Really, Lila, still playing the martyr? Or just waiting to cash in on sympathy? Derek's mocking tone cut through the bustle of the crowded cafe, turning heads at nearby tables. I took a slow, steadying breath, willing my hands not to tremble as I set down my coffee cup. After walking out five years ago, leaving me struggling alone with two teenagers, Derek waltzed back into my life as though no time had passed. Seeing him smiling smugly, I wanted to scream, to throw my scalding coffee in his face. Instead, I met his gaze and gave a thin smile. Still as charming as ever, I see. Ava and Ethan weren't here to restrain me this time. My daughter would have placed a gentle hand on my arm while my son glared daggers at his father. I couldn't afford to make a scene. The owner knew me as a regular, not an unstable drama queen. Come on, Lila, no need to be so hostile. Derek slid into the seat across from me, oblivious to my tension. I just wanted to see how you're getting on. It can't have been easy, raising two kids alone, but you always did love playing the victim. The audacity boiled my blood. I pictured my long nights working freelance design jobs, trying desperately to keep the power on as Derek traveled the world with his young girlfriend, but I wouldn't give him the satisfaction of seeing my struggle. Oh, finding work was tricky at first. I waved a hand breezily. But you know me, I managed all right. Managed, please. We both know you were left cash-strapped from the divorce. Derek raised an eyebrow. But I suppose the kids helped you scrape by. The barb stung. Derek knew firsthand the sacrifices Ava and Ethan had made, giving up their college funds so we wouldn't lose the house. He just didn't care. I ground my teeth, holding back a retort. Derek eyed me curiously. You're looking almost well-rested. Found someone to bankroll you these days? I let out a short, sharp laugh. If only he knew. Last week, I discovered my late mother-in-law had left half her estate to me in her will. She knew her son had abandoned his family. Her last act was ensuring I had the means to rebuild. Irony truly was delicious. Oh, just a few freelance jobs here and there, I shrugged, letting Derek interpret things however he wished. His eyes narrowed, clearly unhappy with my vague response. I felt a spark of satisfaction. After everything he'd put me through, keeping him guessing was the least I could do. Where was that slimy new girlfriend of his, anyway? You can drop the act, Lila, Derek snapped. We both know you don't have two nickels to rub together. I raised an eyebrow. Careful with those assumptions. Things change. Derek stared at me, frustration etched on his face. I let the silence hang between us. Finally, he leaned back, an oily smile on his face. Well, I'm glad one of us managed to turn things around after, you know, everything. He made a vague gesture with his hand, as if our split had been some impersonal, corporate downsizing and not his conscious choice to walk out. Anyway, I should get going. Maybe we can all catch up sometime soon? Sure, Derek. I kept my tone neutral. We'll be in touch. As he walked out the door, I allowed myself a triumphant smile. Derek could keep guessing about my little windfall, at least for now. I had plans for that money. Plans I'd been crafting since the day he left me standing numbly in the rubble of our old life. The time had come for Derek to learn exactly what I was capable of. I could still picture the lawyer's stunned face when I walked into his plush office last week. Mrs. West, please have a seat. I perched on the edge of the leather chair, clutching my purse. After Derek left, I'd gotten used to waiting in dingy government offices, hoping for assistance. This place felt different. The lawyer fiddled with a file on his polished desk before meeting my eyes. I apologize for the surprise visit, Mrs. West. I'm sure you're wondering why I asked you here today. I nodded mutely. Well, I handled the estate of Derek's late mother, Betty West, and she left specific instructions that you were to be informed once the estate was settled. Shock rooted me in place. Derek's mother and I had always been close, despite her son's flaws. She'd even subtly supported me leaving Derek in the end, not that I could afford a divorce lawyer on my tiny income, but I never imagined. Instructions regarding what, exactly? My voice sounded hoarse to my ears. Mrs. West left you a sizable portion of her estate, Mrs. Lila, half to be precise. The room spun. Derek's mother had virtually cut out her only son, instead providing for me and her abandoned grandchildren. Tears burned in my eyes. After everything she'd witnessed of Derek's behavior, she passed her final judgment through this gesture. This is unbelievable, I whispered. It must be some mistake. No mistake, 
the lawyer assured me, he slid a paper across the slick desk. As I scanned the legal document, disbelief gave way to a fiery satisfaction. With these funds, I could provide my children the stable home Derek had yanked away. More importantly, Betty had unknowingly armed me with the means to finally teach my selfish, selfish ex a lesson. I raised my eyes to the lawyer's expectant face. Please convey my deepest thanks to Mrs. West. I, I don't know how to repay this gesture. He nodded. Your resilience and strength of character is repayment enough, Mrs. West. Betty always said you held the family together. I managed a shaky smile, the beginnings of a plan already churning in my mind. Derek had no clue what was coming for him. Now, nearly a week later, I still grin thinking of Derek's pompous swagger. He has no idea the ammunition his own mother provided against him from beyond the grave. Pulling into the driveway, I spot Ava trailing slowly behind her brother towards the house, weighed down by their overflowing backpacks. I hurry over to help lighten their load. Rough first week? The usual, mutters Ethan, averting his eyes. I don't press him for details. The move to a new school had already been hard enough without his father's sudden reappearance. Ava offers me a wan smile. I'm all right, Mom. Class is going fine so far. My brave, empathetic girl. I pull her into a quick hug before urging them towards the house. No need to delay sharing my news. Their stunned faces and exclamations of disbelief draw the first carefree laughter from me in ages. Soon, I vow silently. Soon, we'll give your father exactly what he deserves. Mom, is all this really necessary? Ethan's brows knit together as I lay out brochures on the dining table. Completely necessary, I confirm, lining them up neatly. You both deserve a chance to pursue your dreams. Now we can actually afford that chance. Ava traces her finger down glossy pamphlets showcasing art schools and design programs. A faraway look crosses her face, one I recognize from the early days with her father, before practicalities like cost came crushing in. We know you and Dad struggled to save anything for college, she says softly. You sure you want to spend this money on us? I gently grasp her hand. Ava, sweetie, you and your brother will always be my first priority. My only regret is not having enough to provide this sooner. Before they can argue, I stand briskly. Now, time for phase two. I can feel their curious stares on my back as I boot up the old laptop. We'd made do with sluggish devices and spotty internet since the divorce, but the website I pull up now looks sharp and professional. Lila Gray Designs. Understated, refined. Subtly upscale. What's all this, Mom? Ethan leans over my shoulder. Just a little business I'm starting. I add breezily. Freelance work takes me so far, but with an influx of capital. I let the implication hang with a knowing look. Ethan whistles under his breath. Damn. Graham's really set you up well. The distinct sound of a new notification grabs our attention. Ah! There we are. I turn the screen to show an appointment confirmation from a wealthy client in the next town over. Mrs. Vanderhorn here wants to fully redecorate her home, and Lila Gray Designs fits her aesthetic perfectly. Their delighted laughter draws my first genuine grin in ages. Let Derek get wind of my little venture, and the lies I carefully crafted to shield it. His ego won't tolerate being left out of the loop for long. Like clockwork, Derek shows up the following Saturday while the kids are out, casually mentioning spotting my stylish new business featured in an online advertisement. Oh, just a little side project. I wave him off breezily. Helps bring in some pocket money for extras. His poorly veiled curiosity brings a vindictive spark of satisfaction. I must say, Lila, I'm impressed. Turning things around so quickly, not exactly what I expected from you. The thinly veiled barb slides off as I offer an unaffected shrug. What can I say? I discovered some new motivation. Let him make of that what he will. Derek lingers awkwardly on the doorstep before clearing his throat. Well, I'll let you get back to it, but, uh, let me know if you or the kids need anything. Trailing off, he heads back to his flashy car, envy evident in every step. I gently close the door, triumph surging in my chest. My solicitous ex would likely be turning up more frequently now trying to ascertain exactly where my new income stems from. Little does he know the means of his downfall have already been set in motion. Soon, my well-crafted trap will snap shut around him, and Derek will finally understand exactly what I'm capable of when backed into a corner. The playing field between us is about to be leveled permanently. 
I knew it was only a matter of time before Derek showed up again. Still, hearing the unexpected knock at my front door makes my pulse spike with anger. I wipe damp hands on a dish towel before striding over. Derek's smiling face fills the doorway, his gaze already wandering past me to scope out any changes. Lila, good to see you again. His too bright tone sets my teeth on edge. Just thought I'd check in, see how you and the kids are settling into your new routine. I block his view with my body. Oh, we're all doing great, staying busy, you know. Yeah, I'll bet. Derek attempts to peer over my shoulder. This house looks more polished than I remember. Business must be booming these days. I fold my arms across my chest. Did you want something, Derek? His smile slips slightly at my cool tone. Good. The less at home he feels here, the better. Come on, Lila, no need to be rude. I know the divorce was hard, but we were married a long time. He adopts a reasonable tone. Don't you think it's in the kid's best interest if we get along? The audacity sends hot rage spiraling through me. This pompous jerk didn't give a damn about his children's well-being when he abandoned us. Now he wants to play caring father to worm his way back into our lives? Over my dead body. I inhale slowly. I'm sure the kids appreciate your concern. But we've adjusted well. Anything else? Derek shoves his hands in his pockets, glancing longingly past me. You, uh, never mentioned where this extra income came from. New boyfriend I should know about? There it is. I suppress a sharp smile. You forfeited the right to details about my personal life years ago. My business is just that, mine. Frustration flashes across Derek's face at my evasion. Too bad, he'll have to work a lot harder if he wants back inside, and I intend to slam the door on him when he least expects it. Right, well, I'm happy things are going well for you all. The forced smile is back. Will I see you and the kids at my mother's memorial service next month? We should all catch up properly there. I nod briskly. Oh yes, we'll be catching up, and airing every miserable secret Derek hoped to keep buried. My mind is already churning with ideas when I firmly shut the door on his retreating back. The time has nearly come to pull the trigger on my plan. After years of anguish, Derek will finally face the karmic retribution he deserves. I scan the solemn faces gathered in the church reception hall after Betty West's memorial service, searching for my children. Groups of Derek's family and friends murmur in clusters, casting the occasional curious glance my way. I spot Ava and Ethan speaking quietly near a memorial wreath decorated with Betty's picture. As I approach, Ethan shoots a glare across the room. I follow his gaze to find Derek holding court with his brothers, accepting condolences with a somber expression. Rage simmers in my gut at his callous performance. Derek couldn't be bothered to visit his ailing mother more than once or twice a year but now he milks the grieving son routine for all it's worth. I plan to let Derek slowly self-destruct, his boundless ego never realizing my orchestrations. But this farce is the last straw. Squaring my shoulders, I cross the room to confront the ring of West Brothers. Their conversation cuts off abruptly at my presence. Lila. Derek breaks the sudden silence with a cordial nod. Thanks for coming today and for bringing the kids. I ignore his empty pleasantries, fixing him with an icy stare. I think your brothers should hear exactly why their mother revised her final wishes, don't you, Derek? He pales slightly, eyes darting around. I'm not sure I know what you mean. Oh, I think you do. My sharp tone silences the muttered questions surrounding us. I have the rapt focus of every West family member now. Perfect. You see, Betty left a sizable portion of her estate directly to me not her only son. I keep my gaze locked on Derek's rapidly reddening face. She knew exactly the kind of man you turned out to be, how you abandoned your family without a second thought or a scent of support. I relentlessly continue over murmured exclamations from his relatives. You couldn't be bothered to lift a finger when emergency bills piled up or college funds disappeared overnight. You left two teenagers fatherless without once looking back. Years of pain and rage keep my tone lethal and steady. Your mother saw it all happen under her own roof. Her final act was ensuring your children were provided for without their father's help. My words land like physical blows. Derek's mouth hangs stupidly as he grasps for a response. For over five years I dreamed of finally wiping that entitled look off his face. I lean in to deliver the final twist of the knife. 
You'll be proud to know her money is already providing a bright future for your children, one you didn't see fit to give them yourself. A deafening silence engulfs us as I finish speaking. The truth Betty recognized too late in her son now dawns on every West relation. Red-faced, Derek turns and stalks toward the exit under the weight of their shocked judgment. I came here intending to orchestrate Derek's downfall myself. Instead, Betty ensured he already dug his own grave. Now I'm simply kicking the dirt over him, and I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. I knew it was only a matter of time before Derek's wounded pride drove him to retaliate. Still, opening my mailbox to find a legal notice summoning me to court makes my hands tremble in anger. Skimming through arrogant legal jargon, the gist becomes stomach-turningly clear. Derek aims to contest his mother's will and claim a portion of my inheritance for himself. Alleging, too, that I turned his family against him at the memorial through deception and lies. Red clouds my vision. The last vestiges of self-control shred away, and I storm inside to call the only lawyer I can afford. Her office may be tiny and cramped, but I pray she possesses the grit needed to face Derek's relentless attorneys. He doesn't have a legal leg to stand on, Mrs. West, she asserts during our first strategy session. Judges frown upon these kinds of greedy claims, especially against bereaved spouses and children. I nod, clinging to this lifeline. The inheritance represents my only means of keeping Derek firmly out of our lives. I cannot risk surrendering even a portion of it now. Not when my children are still so vulnerable. As I helplessly watch the court date approach, my outrage toward Derek swells to consuming proportions. The settlement was never about the money itself for me, but the security it offered my family. Security Derek hadn't bothered providing when he had the chance. Now he endeavors to steal even that shred of stability away, like some caricature of a deadbeat dad from a cheap drama. Well, it's time his loved ones recognize Derek for the monster he truly is behind the flashy surface. If I can ensure everyone's eyes are opened in that courtroom, then maybe, finally, he'll slink away for good this time. My chance for closure arrives on a brisk November morning. I dress with meticulous precision. Derek may have the high-priced lawyers today, but appearances still count when reputations are at stake. The hearing itself proceeds agonizingly slow, each minute crawling past as Derek's attorney argues greedy platitudes. I cling white-knuckled to my chair, twitching at every embellished reference to my client's grief at his mother's tragic early passing. Finally, the judge calls me as a witness to illuminate Betty West's intentions in her will revisions. I recount my close bond with the West matriarch in concise, dispassionate detail, before concluding. Your Honor, the only desire motivating this petition is my ex-husband's resentment and pride at being cut off by his own mother. I turn slightly to meet Derek's reddening face. Mrs. West acted decisively to provide for her son's family after witnessing years of callous neglect firsthand. I urge you to recognize her judgment by upholding her wishes. My words reverberate through the suddenly silent room. Out of the corner of my eye, I spot Derek's brothers shifting uncomfortably as the ugly truth repeats back at them. Let Derek try worming into their good graces again after today. When the gavel finally drops, dismissing his claim, the sound echoes with sweet finality. I float from the courtroom sea-scathed but triumphant, Derek's howls of outrage music to my ears. My counterattack succeeded even beyond my hopes, now to press the advantage while Derek regroups and secure my family's independence for good. The courtroom doors had barely closed behind me when my phone began buzzing incessantly with calls. Derek's brothers and cousins all suddenly wanted the real story on their family rift straight from the source. I blocked every last one of them with vicious satisfaction. Let Derek try convincing his relatives of his virtue now, after I aired his dirty laundry so publicly. Even his polished lawyer persona can't erase the image of deadbeat dad I painted. In the wake of the hearing, blissful silence descended from Derek's direction, but I knew better than to believe I'd seen the last of him yet. A narcissist like Derek couldn't tolerate being so humiliated, even by his own mother. Sure enough, just days later, my cell phone lit up with his number. I tapped ignore with a smirk. Derek leaving pleading voicemails was a sweet bonus, but I had a far more interesting call to take. My lawyer wore a delighted grin when I answered. Well, Mrs. West, acquiring that financial affidavit on your ex paid off nicely. 
I just spoke with my contacts, and it seems Derek's assets are mostly tied up in flashy new cars in his luxury apartment. But with that new girlfriend of his being a kept woman, his monthly balances are razor thin. I pictured Derek spinning lies to preserve his wealthy image while desperately financing his lavish lifestyle on credit. It lined up perfectly with his greed for my inheritance. Nothing stroked that fragile ego like other people's money. Well, no more. I couldn't wipe the savage grin from my face as I thanked my lawyer profusely. When I hung up, another notification flashed insistently. A bank transfer into my account for a significant sum. My breath caught as I scanned the description. Anonymous donation earmarked for a local charity supporting single-parent families left destitute by divorce. It seemed one of Derek's brothers decided to preemptively smooth relations after that disastrous court hearing, and the sizable amount now presented the perfect avenue for cementing Derek's downfall. I arrived early on donation day, ensuring I snagged a position right up front as the news cameras started rolling. As the charity representatives stepped up to the microphone for brief remarks, I tuned out their speech, fixing my gaze on the text flying between local reporters in front of me. News really did travel fast in our small town. Right on cue, the director wrapped up her comments by accepting an anonymous $50,000 donation in honor of Derek West's inspiring philanthropy. I relished the comical double-take from the reporters as camera shutters started clicking wildly. Derek's name was about to grace every small-town newspaper and website, indelibly tied to abandoning needy families. I maintained a humble, emotional expression as congratulations poured in, emphasizing my selfless desire to support other struggling single parents. But internally, I was crowing at the comprehensive obliteration of Derek's social standing I just engineered. Let's see how that leggy new girlfriend of his handles becoming involved with such a notorious deadbeat dad. Or how many of Derek's old country club peers will still return his calls once this all circulates. Checkmate. No doubt Derek will keep fighting to save his precious image. But the beauty of social media information is it can never be entirely erased. Every past business connection will have this scandal lurking in the back of their minds now, thanks to me. Karmic retribution indeed, and I'm just getting started. In the weeks following the charity stunt, I waited with bated breath for Derek's reaction, anticipating rage. But as days slipped past with no expensive cars roaring up or shrill calls harassment, an unsettling question took root. Could Derek finally be giving up? The lack of retaliation was somehow anticlimactic after years envisioning this downfall. I knew I secured total social and family exile for Derek. His girlfriend likely dumped him after that mortifying deadbeat daddy designation went public. By all measures, I triumphed. So why this lingering restlessness in my gut? No doubt Derek was off unsuccessfully pleading his case to old money connections who now avoided his calls. Time to refocus on what truly matters, my children, finally thriving free of their father's toxicity. As I review acceptances rolling in daily from prestigious art and journalism programs, I allow myself a small satisfied smile. Betty would be so proud seeing these opportunities her sacrifice created for her grandkids, and I vow to cherish our newfound security and leave thoughts of Derek's future troubles behind me. Until late one Friday afternoon when an unexpected visitor showed up looking properly chastised. I opened the front door to find Derek shifting awkwardly on the step, unable to meet my gaze. Up close, the changes in him stood out. Rumpled clothes, slumped shoulders, hair peppered with more gray than I remembered, he looked like a disgraced CEO after a messy board ouster. I folded my arms, waiting. After a long pause, Derek cleared his throat, eyes on his shoes. I, uh, guess I deserve the cold welcome. You have every right to slam the door in my face. He finally raised his head, remorse creasing his face. What I did, the court case, the threats, all of it. I don't have any defense. Just wanted to tell you I'm sorry, Lila. Truly sorry. Now it was my turn to avoid eye contact as I processed the sincerity in Derek's broken tone. A year ago, I would have given anything to wring this apology from my smug ex-husband. Hearing it now just drudged up the whisper of doubt. Had I gone overboard orchestrating such utter destruction? I shook off that thought with effort. I appreciate you saying that, Derek, but words don't erase the years of pain. My voice remained gentle but firm. 
I've worked hard to build a stable life here. Derek closed his eyes as though stealing himself before responding quietly. You have every right to hate me. I won't bother you again once I sign the divorce papers. My head jerked up as he shoved a document through the door. There on the top line, Derek signed away his legal right to meager spousal support, should my design business someday take off. I stared searchingly at this version of Derek I never knew, a defeated, regretful man ready to let go of his spite and pride. I wordlessly stepped back, allowing Derek space to shuffle inside and close the door. Maybe there was a shred of hope for civility between us yet. 